We are on a mission. A mission to save and revitalize independent pharmacy. On the Catalyst Pharmacy Podcast, you'll get actionable business advice. Hear stories from industry leaders. And share a laugh or two with us. Fuel your passion for pharmacy. One conversation at a time. Hello, Henry. Hannah, <laughs> Hannah, and yes. Hannah. Yes, you've is got that, a Is that really issue. that fun? Is that that really that's just that easy? It's it's it the dynamic <laughs> duo, yes. Hannah and Tana. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and everyone calls me Hannah, so there we go. <laughs> Everybody calls you Hannah. Yes, Hannah, Tanya, Tanya, Tana, <laughs> all the things. <laughs> so is is Tana short for some for something else or? Nope. No. Just Tana. Just Tana rhymes with banana. Hannah <laughs> rhymes with banana. Well, I banana. remember that was like Hannah mm-hmm. banana. So, right. so well, ta- yeah, exactly. Hannah so, banana, Tana banana. I'm banana wafer, Tana kafer. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, my husband has a, a cousin that, I mean, I've known her since she was an infant and she was always our little Hannah banana. And now she's like 22 and I'm just like, you're not supposed to be dressing like that. <laughs> Come on, you're my little Hannah Banana. Yeah. I watched your first steps. This is not, no. <laughs> no. So y'all did a show me. I, I guess that's how we're pulling you guys together. Mm-hmm. Y'all, y'all yes. did, um, now not every episode, right? Um, y- y'all did some episodes together. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. And, and so how did, um, how did that coming together happen? How did they choose you to, um, to do that? It's a good question. <laughs> they probably wish they didn't. Oh, no. no. I thought we you were good. Not true. We That's had a great not time. not true at all. <laughs> yeah. No, we were, um, from an NTPA standpoint, we were looking for rock stars in the immunization space. And so we were trying to find individuals that were doing really successful things with their immunization business. And Tana and Meredy from Brimo were kind of one of those that rose to the top for us. And nice. so when we went out to the shoot, we, you know, got to work together and have them coach the select pharmacies that they worked with. And that's kind of how it all came together. So you didn't really know Tana before? Not me personally, but oh. my colleague, John Beckner, um, who I think you're familiar with, uh, mm-hmm. knew Tana and has worked closely with Tana just in the past. So Tana and Tana, said, it just seems like y'all should have been best friends for years, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Obviously, we were we were instant friends. Yeah, it was. Yeah, so so if connected. have we continued a friendship since the show? Is that this oh, gonna, absolutely? This, well, yeah, it's this it's gonna be a thing. Started like they they've got great chemistry, like and Let's they're already bouncing started. and giggling together. So yeah, <laughs> okay. it makes sense. Question of the morning: What's your favorite, more classical? This can't be current. Current, pump me up song. Like maybe he's not, out. when he says classical, he's not mo- actually like, is it I'm Beethoven not, or Bach? I'm not talking Beethoven. I'm just talking not, not <laughs> in the year 2020 plus. So what, what would be, what would be your favorite pump me up song? 80s, oh. 90s, I think is what 80s, he's looking 90s, for. 80s, 90s, 2000. I love 90s rap music. So okay. um, Juicy <laughs> by combat. Biggie is my, is my nice. pump me up song. That's such a good one. <laughs> That's such a good one. <laughs> The fun facts. I like all the rap songs. I like all the rap Ooh. songs. And what is yeah. yours? Yeah, no. I, what I'm what just, is yours? Just noting the dance. Because you, I, you have no. an answer. What is what is your pump me up song? I don't know. See, that, I like all kinds of songs. That's what I was trying to figure out this morning. I was trying to think about what's a what would be the go to pump me up song. I really like Jukebox Hero. Okay. Nice. Okay. Standing That's a good in one. The rain. Yes. Lincoln Park. Bleed it out. All day. Ooh, nice. Um, I probably would go with Bruce Bruce Springsteen's 10th Avenue Freeze Out. That's oh, nice. just a okay. good rock one. Nice. So big, big Bruce Springsteen fan. <laughs> nice. All right. So tell us a little bit. Um, let's talk a little bit about the show. Yeah. What is the uh, takeaways from that experience? I'll let Tana go first on that one. All right, Tana. Yeah, so they were two totally different experiences. Um, the first pharmacy we went into, they were really trying to jumpstart their immunization program. So it was very different. How do you start giving them, helping them have the confidence to to 
expand their program. And then the second pharmacy we went to, they already had a really um, big immunization program, very busy pharmacy. And so it was more about efficiency right. and helping them streamline things so that they could work more immunizations into their workflow. So everybody, both parties were, I, I knew Steven Anderson, the second episode we did prior to that. So it was fun to kind of work with him and see his pharmacy. Um, the first episode, we didn't we didn't know them, so it's fun to get to, get to know them, and we've stayed in touch since the episode and and helped them with questions. So it it was a lot, a lot of fun, a lot of fun. What is what is your background, Tana? Like, where did you start out? How did you get into NCPA? Gosh, so my interest entrance into pharmacy happened. Uh, my dad was an independent pharmacist in our Ooh. hometown, so I've been in pharmacy my entire life. Um, went to pharmacy school at VCU and have always been very involved and interested in independent practice um, specifically and then community-based practice. How do okay. we grow this? Um, so yeah, that's um, I did a residency um, in community-based practice at Brimo in Richmond, Virginia, and then I've stayed on with them ever since, and I'm their director of clinical services. And how I got involved with NCPA is, well, they are um, they help independent pharmacies um, do all the fun, cool things, and mm -hmm. also very close friends with John Beckner. Um, and so he kind of told me all the benefits of of being an NCPA. And so our pharmacy, I mean, it, it's a perfect match. Um, it was it was a no brainer. Are you in CPSN? I am. I I was the lead network facilitator for Virginia for a while. Now I am a luminary, and I sit on the board for Virginia um, with CPSN. So yes. And um, Hannah, what about you? Your background, how did you get in and started with NCPA? Yeah, so I am also a pharmacist by training. I went to the University of Toledo. I'm an Ohio girl. While I was there, I got really involved in student organizations and kind of realized more of my passion was in this administrative community outreach type of role and mm -hmm. started to cling on to association management as a career path for myself. So okay. after school, I did an executive fellowship with the Pharmacy Quality Alliance, PQA, yep. and stayed on board with them for um, another year and a half or so after that fellowship. And then around... Um, Around that time point, I was looking for a transition and a change. And one of my good friends and classmates, actually, Kevin Day, who owns his own pharmacy now in the Dayton area. Yeah, he's so good. I just saw him at um, multi-location last yeah. week with his with his wife. And his big smile, they always have. Oh, such, a, such a good friend. All right, keep going. Um, but yeah, so he was looking to go back to Ohio to take over for his dad. Yep. And so mm -hmm. I literally called him up and said, okay, so you're leaving. That's really depressing and sad that you're can not going to be in this area anymore. But can I have your job? <laughs> That's pretty good. Sorry to see you go. Can I have your spot? <laughs> okay. You're not going to eat you that, know? are you? <laughs> yeah. Literally said, let's go get a beer. And a month later, I joined, uh, joined NCPA. So I'm coming up on my five-year anniversary with the company now. Wow. And have been oh, working wow. with Kurt Proctor and our innovation center doing all the cool, fun things that NCPA does for pharmacists. That so, okay. Mentioned. So five years, that's right. You probably were there the last year that Lois was there. Who's like, what? Oh, yes. So did she, did she, <laughs> did she you get you with, with the, the birthday? birthday <laughs> oh, absolutely. Day one. <laughs> Day one. You were initiated. I was. It's awesome. I was. It was hysterical. I got to do that when I get old and get away, can get away with it. I mean, yeah. just start now with any new employee. <laughs> yeah, just start with any new employee. <laughs> I don't, I, yeah, you need to get a little, yeah. I don't, I don't think you can quite pull it off like Lois did. I was like, we need to like I'm pull curious. together. I'm curious, what are y'all talking about? What, is, what, is, what did okay, Lois so do? <laughs> Lois, who's like, um, one of like, she's like OG and CPA to me. Okay. Um, just is the sweetest, sweetest woman you will ever meet and just a trickster. She's a fox. She's a fox. And we had um, Doug Hoey on the podcast um, when we first started this. And um, we talked about Lois. And I was like, has she actually retired yet? Because she said she was like, for five years, it was, I'm retiring. This is my last year. And then we'd see her. And it's like, I thought you were retiring. She goes, no, no, no. This is my last year. This is my last year. And I, was, and, uh, I, I asked Doug, I'm like, what is your favorite Lois Well, first story? of all, he said, She's had like three retirement parties and, and he's given one, at least three speeches. <laughs> yeah. But go ahead. And I'm like, okay, well, what is your favorite Lois story? And, and, uh, he 
because mine was, it was like her parting gift of wisdom to me. It was like, this is my official last year. And she goes, we've hired a new lady. And I told her it was my birthday. And she goes, it's what I do to every new person that starts is I tell them it's my birthday. And Doug said, yes, she did pull that on me. And he was like, oh, I like I'm take- that. He, and so he told someone, yeah, I'm taking Lois out for her birthday for lunch today. And they're like, her birthday's in yeah, the, the, like I took her out for a birthday last month. And I was like, "Does anybody know in Lois's actual birthday, birthday is?" is. <laughs> so yeah, that that was kind of Lois's parting gift to me on the at the last NCPA annual that I saw her at. And she goes, "No, no, no, this is it. This is my last." And she goes, "And here's my little trick of wisdom to you." And I'm just like, "Oh, sneaky, sneaky. I like it." So yeah, mm-hmm. I'm I'm with Jeff. Like I'm I'll get older. And I'm going to figure out something like you're going to have gonna, a thing. That's going to be my trick. It's my birthday. Oh, welcome. Today's my birthday. Let's go. You heard lunch. Hannah said start now. Why not just start <laughs> yeah. now? <laughs> exactly. Why well, plan for the future? I like that exactly. that, that activism. That, that, but, yeah. NCPA needs that. Yes, start now. She was a, a very, very like spicy in a fun way character. Yep. Oh, yeah. Lois is the, the best. She did a lot of our like meeting sponsorship type mm-hmm. um, activities for our convention. Um and then fun fact, she's got two, three nephews in the NFL. Um, oh, really? Okay. Wow. Yeah. That's Stephon. that's probably some type of Guinness record there to have that many relatives. <laughs> in the NFL. That's crazy. Yeah, the Diggs family. So Stefan and oh. um, I'm going to totally blank on the other names now. So huh. probably cut this part out. When I- <laughs> <laughs> <Just, laughs> Mark will know. My my husband will know. He's a big uh, football, and like I'll ask him a, questions, and he's just like, "No, no, not at all." And I'm just like, "See, this is what it's like watching TV when I'm trying to watch something, and you ask stupid questions, and I give you the same response." So yeah, she has a great memory and big on revenge. So just oh, okay. <laughs> I would say I'm more crafty. Crafty on yeah. my revenge. Crafty in her crafty. revenge. Very structured. Very very structured and formal. You know. Very, all right, so so we've done some of these episodes. We're going to do another episode. Are you two going to do another one? Not for the time being. We okay. just wrapped up all five episodes that we planned, and the next one or the last one is about to be released tomorrow. Actually. That was vaccines. That's okay. Nicolette and um, Tim Mitchell. And Tim, Tim Mitchell. Mitchell. Yeah, I was like, they were like, I, I saw the previews for that. Like, I can imagine when Nicolette was like, uh, you're going to go to Tim Mitchell's store and talk to him about marketing. <laughs> He's like. Oh, okay. But he's a, he he said he learned a lot, and it, and that's when you always take. You know, Tim is really really good at the whole local thing, right? Oh yeah, relationships absolutely. and school and and you know which is which is a lot of marketing, right? Yeah, Just I networking. Mean, he and, was super innovative. I mean, in the way he handled the pandemic vaccines, just going, okay, we've got all these vaccines. Let's go do a vaccine in the church parking lot. And just like mm-hmm. he put that out on social media and then there was like just lines of cars and he vaccinated a lot of people. So, I mean, kudos to to him. I mean, that was definitely a really great play on y'all's part to get him on there and talking about vaccines. So, so the episode yeah. that's coming out, it's coming out tomorrow. Yes. Okay. And that's on marketing, right? Correct. Yep. And, and so if people wanted to watch that episode or catch it, they are, is it on YouTube? Is it Spotify? Like, is, or is it just everywhere? <laughs> um, it's on our website and on our YouTube channel at NCPA vids. Okay. That's the, like at NCPA. hashtag or whatever it is. <laughs> so, so are we going to do another NCPA one? It's fun. Um, interesting thing I saw um, just the other day is, as we all start thinking about marketing and, um, you know, if you look at the last five years, content's been king. Right. You mm-hmm. you create a lot of content. And, and now that AI is going to be creating a lot, uh, it's easier to make content, easier to get started, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think there's going to be an explosion of content, written content. So so yeah. priorities are probably going to go to video. You, you know, the things that that Google will tune in to probably look more to is video content, uh, interactive content, surveys, things like that. Um, so I think it's really cool in CPA doing the videos. I think the little video show, you know, we had talked once about doing kind of a, a fix up show, with, um, with Doug Howie. Um, and he, he acts like he's camera shy. He's not camera shy. He's not camera he's shy. Not. So what's no. next? Yeah. So we're looking to do more episodes of this. This was our vaccine episodes, uh, series, if you will, but we're looking to kind of use this model to talk about, 
you know, any type of practice transformation that needs to happen. So we might do a series on like adherence and med sync Mm -hmm. or other types of issues around, um, you know, just general chronic disease management, basically Mm -hmm. anything that can be shown and interacted with, but taking pharmacies from where they are now in this dispensing only kind of model and really showing them how to implement these services and what it takes to, to really go beyond and expand and, Mm -hmm. and be profitable while taking care of their patients. So are when you're picking your guests, are you being very, are you picking like, are you going based off of, Hey, this is the topic I want to talk about. Are you just like picking content or are you just picking people? It's a combination of all three, actually. So the initial, um, the initial episodes, we put out a call to say like, Hey, we're looking to do this series on improving vaccination programs or starting vaccination programs. Who wants help? Like what, and what do you want help with? And so we put out this kind of application or the survey and basically said, like, select all the things that we think you might need help with. And we gave them options like marketing, but starting a program, ordering, um, you know, finding patients, all of those things. And then kind of looked through who applied and reached out and talked to them and figured out kind of more what they they wanted and what they were looking to get out of it. And then as we kind of got that information, we started to think about who we wanted to pair them with as a coach. So mm. Tana and Meredy were really great because they they had the pharmacist technician duo and they were really helpful to be able to say, here are these cool things that I do as a pharmacist, but also here are the things that I do as a technician and how we can bring that all together. And then, you know, Nicolette, coming up with the marketing episode Mm -hmm. and all of her wisdom that she could share. Even someone like a Tim Mitchell, who's doing amazing and great things was still able to learn a lot. And you'll see that he really taps into his, his younger staff to get some of that training too. They need to do a pharmacy's kitchen on compounding. (laughs) Bam. Right. (laughs) So I think with, I think with, with marketing, helping pharmacies market, you've got to break down some of our terminology to them and like, you know, talking to the patient. So talking to a patient, why should they get vaccinated for COVID or flu? I mean, it's It's really patient. Yeah. It's it's really patient specific. What in getting to know what, what, why don't you want to get vaccinated? What are your fears? What concerns Mm -hmm. do you have that we can talk about? So, you know, obviously there is a lot of mis and disinformation out there. So really tapping into where are they getting their their information and how can we kind of guide them down the right paths to get correct information and then mm-hmm. help them make the best decision for them and their families. And I don't think that's one single thing you say. I think it's very patient specific when you're in that interaction and, and who they are and what they believe. All right, Tana. So let let's build a rock. Let, let's build our house. Okay. So I, I'm out of control. My pharmacy, I feel out of control. What should I start with? What's the rock? first step? Give me my foundation. What's my first thing? Go to this first. So I feel like, um, the medication synchronization program really, okay. um, got us on a better workflow. And we've been doing this now for 12 plus years and we just doubled wow. our sync patients, um, in November of this year. So, um, you know, it's, everything is, and then those patients are your captive patients, right? Because they get all their medications from your pharmacy. So then you target them for what other services can I help you with? Specifically immunizations, that's kind of easy, right? You can do that by age. You can do that by medication, disease state, you know, those types of things. But then what, what else are we missing? Um, are these mostly geriatric patients? How can we make sure they're safe in their home? What things can we carry in our stores? And then what we do at Brimo, so we have a residence, a community based residency program and our resident is tasked every year with like a quarterly project to focus with our sync patients. So what are we going to focus on? Um, we realized this year that we actually, don't know how many of our patients smoke. Like we've never asked that question. Yeah. It's There's on one of those. Questions. It's not in the, it's not uh, in our the pharmacy check. system is a straight yeah. checklist. You have to do a, yeah. uh, a, uh, you'd have to put it in as a, as a medication, as a, not as a medical condition, medical condition. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And so, so we, you know, that was one of our quarterly initiatives. So my point is start with your sink 
patience, build that business so that your your workflow is good and allows you to do some more of those clinical things um, because you're talking to those patients every month. So when you call them and say, hey, what meds have changed? Have you been to the hospital? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, have you had any doctor's visits? This month, I want, we're going to focus on, or this quarter, we're going to focus on blood pressure goals. Do you happen to know what your blood pressure is? Do you happen to know what your yep. goals are? And so every quarter, we do something different. We do it quarterly because month changing something monthly, we found, is just too, too intense. Mm-hmm. Um, so quarterly initiatives, and then the residents kind of um, part of their project is to evaluate that. How many patients did we touch? How many people knew their goals? How many immunizations did we give based on this e-care plan? Mm-hmm. Um, my resident this year, it's actually her, her project she'll be presenting at APHA, is um, e-care plans for immunizations specifically and how that um, increased okay. based off of um, screening them and then bringing them into the pharmacy to administer the immunizations. All right. So so step one, we need, a, we need a medicine program. What yes. percentage yes. what, what percentage do you think you would say, hey, so so f- one thing, first thing, get MedSync patients to about what percent of your base? So I, I'm trying to think of our goal sheet now. I want to say ours is like 80 to 90 percent. Oh, wow. um, we have a high percentage of sync patients. Like that's a, that's that's what huh. we do. We take care chronically of patients. Um, and so we want to be I there. Like go to chronic care. Um, we, we actually at Brimo don't do a lot of acute care. I mean, obviously when they get sick, you know, we're going to deal with that. But a lot of times, um, if we're closed, you know, they'll, they'll go somewhere else for acute meds. Um, we're really taking care chronically of the patient. So that's all of our business models, our goals, everything are based on chronic care of the patient more so than acute. So it sounds like a great transformation for show me is really taking some group. We talked about this actually, when we were at one of the pharmacies, like, wow, they, they really need to, to maybe have a sync program or a more robust sync program. And then they would have better ways to target patients for more of the clinical programs. Yeah. And and maybe taking somebody, Hey guys, we want you to be on the show. You got to say, you got to be dedicated to getting at least experts, at least 40% on sync. Right. So we're going to come in. We're going to get you started. We're going to get going. That's what the show is going to be about. But then you got to keep going. You're going to tell us you're going to keep going to 40 percent. And then we're going to come back and we're going to do a redeal on what's different. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. We're going to have video of the phone ringing. Right. Phone used to ring. You know, we're going to take a this is how many times the phone rang in the day before sync. This is how many times the phone rings now. Oh, yeah. It just 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 blows my mind. People, you're you're not doing sync. Get rid of your rotary phone and get with the program. I just can't even imagine it now. Like even thinking about our delivery program, how were we going to these patients' homes like five and six times a this month? Is crazy. Like, oh my gosh. I, I just it blows my mind. And and I will tell you that for us to implement this in our pharmacy years and years ago was painful. It was painful. Now I feel like it's more the norm. There's more tools available, but I can tell you that our staff was not used to this. They were like, what are these paper charts? We don't have paper charts anymore, but we Thank started you. with paper charts. Um, it, it was a mess. And people left because they're like, I don't, I don't like this program. You know, it was a big transformation for our pharmacy for the better. We realized you have to have the right people. And when you have the right people, great things can happen. And so that was part of our transformation um, was getting, getting the right people on our team. And then it exploded from there. All right, so I, I see this big foundation dropping. Bam, this video, MedSync, right? What's next? All right, so I got the MedSync thing going. What's the next thing? So immunizations, you know, obviously very um, involved with that, have been since, um, you know, we started immunizing in Virginia, really, back in 1997. Um, so I remember when my dad ordered his first vial of flu vaccine, like literally we ordered like five vials for a season, which cracked me up. You know, I mean, I could do five vials in 20 minutes now. Um, but that was back when we were first starting. And so, um, really, really growing that because we know that is a lucrative business. We know there are, that adult immunization rates are down um, even before the pandemic. And so it's important to, you know, when you've got those patients there, can you maximize their health and wellness? So mm-hmm. um, that's a big part of what we focus on too is health and wellness. So obviously immunizations fall into that. So okay. I think that's um, a good next step. All right, immunizations. What's next? Um, disease state management. 
So your sync patients, um, can you, are, is there a way for you to um, divvy them up and how can you help them and what services can you offer? Um, you know, maybe, comp maybe some complimentary services um, that bring them in the door and then kind of build on those. Um, so we do clinical um, initiatives like blood pressure, osteoporosis, cholesterol, um, and diabetes screenings um, that are part of our program. And then when we get them in the door, when we get them thinking about chronic disease a little differently than other, um, than other things we can offer them, you know, diabetic socks shoes, mm -hmm. um, and, and other clinical programs that we offer. Yeah, I can. And, and then kind of the next thing, as you think about disease states, you kind of think about who you're working with in town and, and, and another yeah. kind of show me, I think I could see is this whole getting you out creating, of the pharmacy, getting you out of the pharmacy, right? creating mm -hmm. relationships so, with, you know, taking them, coming facilities. out with a strategy mm -hmm. of, Hey, we're going to come and these are the places we're going to visit. We're going to go visit public, you know, try to do some video with them. Uh, really saying, hey, your outreach. If you're not, Ooh, you're, if you're a community pharmacy a and you're not in the community, I'm putting Eric Larson on their plate because, like, he, we were there for a really cool success story about um, the COVID vaccines. We were there when he got the call from the state because the big box chains were not getting it done, <laughs> and so the state. The state health called Eric Larson and said, "We've got COVID vaccines. Can you get them dished yeah, out?" Public today? health had a deal, yeah. and and that's who they turned to because they had the relationships. And, and that's what I think it'd be fun to do a show that's helping people learn how to build those relationships. And and yeah. you could see even uh, you know if you could get some local people engaged, like public health engaged, and where you could come in and video that as well. Cause I think it'd be a good sales pitch to tell public health, Hey, we're filling this thing to help pharmacists learn how to work better with their public health department. Right. And I think they'd be Absolutely. in on that. I think they'd be in with. Well, NCPA did, did something similar with that, with NACHO and mm -hmm. working, um, really? getting STI testing in community-based pharmacies. And, uh, we, Brimo actually got a grant with our local health department. Yep. And now how do you grow that relationship? You're exactly right. How do they, they, some you, they don't know what they don't know. They don't know how pharmacists, what we do really, and how they can send patients to us. So absolutely, marketing is another big step. That that would be my next. Well, that that might be the bottom layer of that. Like who who do you have going out and engaging your community? Because you can do great things, and we as pharmacists talk about ourselves all the time and how great we are. But do other people know? Mm -hmm. And really having that expertise, we're we're not very good at that. Yeah, it's that pharmacy echo chamber that we're yes. always talking to ourselves and never talking to others. But, <laughs> right. but there's, a, there's a coaching there too because <clears throat> pharmacists feel like I've got to come up with my speech, yeah. right? I got to go in and I got to go, well, you know, I'm a this and I'm a that and I'm a this and I'm a that. And, and really teaching them about being consultative and really just going in and saying, hey, I'm the local pharmacist down here and I was just checking in to see what you need help with. Exactly. And stop. That's all you got to do. And exactly. then you stop and you like listen. It's very different in a more urban area than in some of the rural areas. So okay. it's a different conversation. Um, I feel like that in Richmond because I, I grew up in a very small town. So it's easy to know who all the providers were. Um, but now my pharmacy is in Richmond and we deal with providers all over. So really being intent and in, in, like, who are you going to market Interesting. to? Um, and so it's, I think it's very, it's a different, totally different approach. Yeah. And that's um, more, so, a little bit of data mining, figuring yeah, out yeah. where your patients are growing from, from and figure out why, you know, we seem exactly. to be getting a lot of patients from blank. Why are we getting them? How can right. I, you know, pump that think, up? Yeah. I think we talk about, you know, marketing from like the patient standpoint, how do we get more patients into our store? How do we get their business? But we haven't done as great of a job of that, like business to business marketing, of here's how to doctor detail, here's how to create these relationships with your religious entities in the areas or your other small businesses that are literally across the street. They have employees that they want to take care of. They have patrons that they could recommend. So I think it's like that combination of not only trying to service your patients and market in that vein, but also how do you market to the small businesses and the other employers in your area too. Super cool. Kind of jealous. Y'all look like having a lot of fun. Oh, um, it's been so fun to do this. Yeah, so, it, it, it really has. So outside of work. What's, what, what's the hobbies? What do we do for fun? 
Oh man, I'm going to sound like a complete nerd, but um, (laughs) my husband and I and our group of friends, we love playing board games and we've been on this like whole kick this uh this winter this new game basically a sequel to one has come out and it's just this like crazy like fantasy monster puzzle like, game it's called frost haven um okay. frost haven. It, it makes me sound like such a nerd <laughs> but it's been so fun no play like i, I love playing games with my kids there's although there's one game we cannot play anymore because our daughter just annihilates us but it is so freaking fun it's called blitz and it's it's really freaking crazy. It's it's a combination of like if you've ever pay, played uh, Skipbo or War, and yeah. cards are just flying everywhere at a rapid. She pace. got really fast hand eye coordination. Yeah, like we. I we remember growing up playing the Atari. You know, m- my friend and I would play be playing Missile Command, and we we're like really good. And we'd always like let's give it to my dad and laugh at him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's equivalent to what she's just like, and we so. You, ha- like, you start out play. with like 10 cards and we've even tried to go, no, 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 no. You have to do 15. You have to do less, more cards. You yeah, have to you do have to- more and we will do 10, but you have to do 15. And she still murders us. Yeah. We do, we do a, we do a, Hey, it's time to put on the brakes and we'd like kick her yeah. chair, push her chair back. And <laughs> that, nope. She just annihilates. Hard. Yeah, so then she'll Aww. stand up and she's just like, cards are flying everywhere. So it's crazy. So that somebody plays fun. with her. Yeah. She's and too then, good at it. Any animals? Dogs, yes. cats. I have a dog. His name is Soto. He was named after Juan Soto, the baseball player, because we had okay. season tickets to the Nationals when we were living in D.C., and that was the year they won the World Series, and we sat right behind left field, and he became kind of our player. So nice. when we adopted so I'm gonna our name dog, a dog, we after named him, him after That's, him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Look, maybe, he maybe, he'd have have... Been, maybe if he had lost, you'd have been like, oh, I'm going to name my dog after that <laughs> Yeah. What kind of dog? So, uh, he is a Saluki mix. We actually rescued him from Oman. Um, okay. He's called a he's like a wadi dog is what they call it. But like in Oman, they treat all dogs as like street dogs as basically vermin and, you mm. know, kind of kill them on site. So this organization that we got connected through in Virginia brought a whole bunch of dogs over from Oman and we... Uh, we were able to rescue him. So he looks like a little fox. He's you know, only about 35, 40 pounds at most. And okay. literally is like orange in color and has kind of the white markings. And um, it's really interesting. But he's so sweet. He just loves to snuggle and play. And he's got like the biggest puppy play pose. Um, you know, when dogs like get down on their front paws and yes. have their butts up in the air. His is like to the extreme. Like, I don't know how he does it, but... He's this like long and lanky, kind of greyhoundy, but fluffy. I don't even know how to describe it, other than he looks like a fox, and he's so sweet, and we love him. <laughs> and and, and what- Tana, what you said, you've got two cats. Yes, have two cats. So we like to travel a lot. Okay. Um, anytime my son has days off from school, we're always long weekends somewhere. Um, so cats are much easier to leave yes, um, and have are. someone to come feed them. They're indoor outdoor cats. Um, mm-hmm. Cooper, Jake, and Carlos Cucumber, all Southern yeah. animals, should have two names. Very huh. important. Interesting. Um, but I also grew up with, I mean, we had a Vietnamese pot belly pig, a ferret. We had donkeys. We had dogs. So I you love all animals. I, yes, Were y'all we in the, con- Mar- you in the we country? We had two donkeys, yeah. Mary and Joseph. Interesting. Yes, nice. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, so I I wish I could have more animals, but it doesn't fall into the the traveling right now um, with having to board and all of that. So our cats are pretty self sufficient. Um, so I love them. What kind of traveling? Wherever. Um, I like to travel to warm weather. I okay. do not like being cold. Um, I grew up ten minutes from a ski resort. I've actually never been skiing in my entire water ski or sorry snow skiing in my yep. entire life. I've been okay. water skiing. Um, so yeah, we like to go to the Gulf coast of Florida. That's a nice long weekend direct flight from Richmond. So it's, it's a nice getaway. The water's okay. warm, the weather's warm. So. Were you at NCPA multi? I w- I was not, I could not go to that, but I wish clear water. It was water. so yeah. nice. Yes. Yeah. Clear water is so nice. Yes. Although we usually I think I'm go supposed to, like, to keep Treasure that a secret, Island, but... Madeira Beach. So right, right, right there. I'm going to ask indoor, outdoor cats. So do they have the little door that only, lo- only opens for them? So 
Yes, in our into our garage, like yep. not into our actual house, but they have a chip. Each of our cats have a chip, and so okay. it's programmed with the door, and they can come into the garage. They yep. never use that, with the exception of when we're on when we're gone, because we keep them out. So they'll mm-hmm. come in and eat in the garage, but otherwise, no. I'm a cat butler. I let them in all day, every day. <laughs> yes, I, I in have and out, a, in and out. I have an outdoor cat also, and we put the cat door in, but we didn't put the actual cover on it was just like okay figure it out and then we actually activated the piece where it was like okay now you have to put your neck in there and then she hears the latch and then she jumps through in and out all day long yes they just go into our garage so yeah that's Yeah. Um, that's, that's and the that's cat that's more cat. motivated by food he does it a lot more than the other one the other one just gets mad and, and leaves for the week and then comes back <laughs> you know goes to our neighbor's house gets food yeah yeah so we actually have a dog with a dog door and an automatic oh, nice. fe- and an automatic feeder, an automatic waterer. So one night we can leave him and he's fine. It it just does right on the time. He's in and out fine. Um, that is nice. We lock the the area he's in and out of. We lock it off to the, the, to, the, to the bedroom. Yeah. And then if we're, he's gone more than that, they just have a sitter comes by and spends thirty minutes with him and mm-hmm. make sure he hasn't been carried away by hawks or something. I don't <laughs> oh, I don't God. know why that would he's been carried off. He's been carried off. Why do we want to find out till we get back home? But. My wife and I both I travel travel a lot together, a lot separate. Um, so, so what kind of dog do you have? He's a Papillon. Um, oh, that explains the getting carried away by hawks. Yeah, yeah. But he's a bigger. This one, my last one was smaller. He's a bigger, and I think he'd give them a little bit of a really? run for their money. Because huh? I think I think Jay's kind of small compared to other Papillons I've seen. No, uh, no, no. You haven't been seen a lot of Papillons. Okay. No, or I've just seen. He's a, a lot bigger. Of... He's more. He's more athlete. He's athletic. He. He thinks he's, he's pretty. pretty and he knows kind it. Of runs and <laughs> yep. lets his hair kind of flow. Love it. You know, he just yep. he's very, uh, oh, he's so the awesome. jock. Okay. So if anybody wants to, what, what's, what, what, what's the marketing pitch for, for your show? We're talking marketing. We're talking um, entertainment. For so the show me. What's what the pitch is, what's for people the, who haven't seen What show is me? the marketing Why pitch? Why did somebody watch this? Well, because this is a fun, entertaining, and educational video series where even if you've been doing this for years, you can still pick up on tidbits and tips that are going to improve your business, whether okay. it's um, you know, implementing a new service. We have one of our episodes focused on travel vaccines. So I know a good portion of our members are not actually involved in providing travel vaccines. So that entire episode is just incredible. Beverly Schaefer um, out in Washington, Seattle, Washington area comes to Bridgeport, Connecticut to teach, um, lax puta petty at Bridgeport pharmacy, how to implement a travel vaccine program. Um, the episodes that Tana has done both with our pharmacists in Philadelphia and then with, um, our pharmacists in South Boston, those are just like good efficiency tips. And, um, I love Tana, your tips on your little like cart that you bring to your offsite clinics. Like that segment is just like so perfect. Cause it tells you like everything you need to do to bring an offsite kit with you to do an employer. So even, even in the kind of like 20 to 30 minutes of this episode, you are getting a ton of tips and you're seeing yourself in these in these pharmacies, in these episodes. So even if you're already doing things, there's something that hopefully you can relate to. So I talked to um, Kurt at NCPA about Mm -hmm. doing some clips. Um, Have y'all tried those and how are they going? We are working on pulling those out and extracting those as we speak. So um, we pulled out some of the, the travel clips for example, from that episode. Mm -hmm. And those have been received incredibly well. Um, So yeah, really kind of taking the overall episode, you can watch it in its entirety, really make it the drama that it is. Yeah. Um, And and, and so the point was there for everybody that a lot of times when we do video, we, and and we kind of try to sell it on social media, we do that with little sales. Tune in Friday Mm -hmm. for... Hannah and Hannah, isn't that fun? You know, something like that. And, and, and the advice was 
make those provide value. If that clip was yeah. all by itself and they never watched the other any other show, that that entertained me or it provided value. It wasn't an advertisement for a future show because that what's get that's what gets them to like it or forward it to their friends because they got value yep. from that. Right? You know, absolutely. Um, and, and, you know, we've started doing that and Brandon started doing that here and, and we're picking up like two subscribers a day, you know, uh, by adding more value uh, to those clips. Mm-hmm. So, I'm, so I'm super interested to touch base back and figure out how that goes. Uh, you start doing more of those. And the travel vaccine was a great yeah. one to start on because there are a mm-hmm. lot of good little short tips in there. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, so we're, we're definitely actively looking at that. And um, we are looking at, linking resources to some of the tips that are provided there too. So again, like when you're watching the video, you know how on YouTube where it's like subscribe here or like look at our show notes or, you know, whatever it may be, we're going to start adding those links to, you know, here's a, you know, patient intake form or here's some sample marketing flyers that you could use when you go to talk to physicians. So we we're kind of layering all that stuff in as we go further now. So got the kind of show out, but now here's, here's reasons to keep coming back to it. Okay. So uh, we've enjoyed doing the podcast. Um, and so what would you say has been your favorite memory or experience, uh, from y'all doing your episodes? I know what mine is. Oh. And this is just in general. So okay. I've, I've never done anything like this before. Never had a somebody like a production crew that like mics you up, does all the things, make sure mm-hmm. your makeup's right. I mean, I've, I've never done anything like that. So when they sit the call sheet <laughs> and this, this is so funny. So they have all, you know, like what time you need to show up and what you mm-hmm. need to do. And it was like the talent arrives at seven 30 and, and we were the talent like <laughs> Mary and I, and we, so now she has my technician who's also like does a lot of marketing at our pharmacy, um, created a TikTok and an Instagram with the talent RX. And so she'll post certain things from oh, us and funny. things we've done. And nice. so yeah, the it. talent. And so we, she sends me a screenshot with the wide eye emoji. She's like, they're calling us the talent. <laughs> <Are you scared? laughs> so then we just ran with it and we think it's fun. And the production crew that we worked with, we worked with them both times. They were so much fun. I mean, mm-hmm. so much fun. So for me that it was getting to know all those people. That mm-hmm. was the most, mm-hmm. it, was, it was great. It was a great experience. What so- about you, Hannah? Yep. Yeah, my favorite experience of this whole thing has been able to just really connect with these pharmacists, go into their stores, but also the talent that are coming in sharing their expertise. It's just mm-hmm. phenomenal to see and witness the um, the relationships these pharmacists have in their community and to watch every single one of them you know, say hello to their customers by their first names and get to really know their staff. So I think you know, in the spirit of building these relationships and creating these networks, that has been the most rewarding thing for me on this experience is like Tana said, the production crew has been amazing. These, um, you know, the directors and others that have been part of this staff have been incredibly amazing and their stories are incredible to hear. But the pharmacists that we work with, honestly, it's just, it's so rewarding to see what good they're doing in the community and to witness that has been just incredibly rewarding for, for me and kind of why we do what we do at NCPA. So just really excited that it solidifies that feeling. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay. Of all of your guests or your episodes, what would you say has been the best piece of advice that you've uncovered that you yourself are like, oh, wow, that's awesome. I never thought of that. I think one of the things that I've, you know, personally witnessed kind of across the board in all of these episodes is, you know, more than you think, you know, and you just need to have the confidence to start and not Mm -hmm. be afraid to fail when you start, because we're all pharmacists, we're all type A, we want everything to be perfect, we don't want to get in trouble for doing something wrong. But in a lot of these endeavors, you just need to commit to starting and then Mm -hmm. figure it out as you go. And I think that message comes through in almost every single episode in some way, shape or form. So I think just getting that message out to pharmacists, that, you know, if something needs to change, make it happen. Just do it. Like you said, let's get uh, it started. <laughs> yes. You know, that'll be a clip. 
See, that was a perfect, that, that what you just said right there, that'll be a clip for this episode. There we go. Yeah. Just be brave. What was, what's your favorite, um, memory of the podcast? My favorite memory yeah, of memory our podcast? Memory experience of the podcast. Yeah. Uh, I would say it was the Doug Hoey one. Cause you have With not, the fanny pack. not, yeah, <laughs> he's not let the fanny pack go. And then also getting to kind of, you know, talk about everybody's favorite industry person. Um, if you've been in pharmacy for more than 10 years, then everybody knew Lois and everybody loves and misses Lois. And so I think mm-hmm. kind of sharing those memories of her spicy character. Spicy. Um, yes. <laughs> I, I would say that was probably one of my one of my favorite episodes was um, awesome. getting to talk to NCPA uh, CEO and Graham Pumba, um, <laughs> Doug Howie about his fanny pack and Lois. So That's funny. That's awesome. <laughs> what about you? What has been your favorite podcast episode or moment? The dad jokes. Oh, Definitely gosh. the dad jokes. <laughs> I yes. love that too. I have a dad joke calendar on my, um, on my desk. Uh, I don't Tell know. all my friends. So many. <laughs> I sit there. So what's the dad joke of this episode then? Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What is the dad joke? Oh, it's of a this different time? time. You got a different. You, we're not doing dad jokes today. It's, it's already been asked. You got the gauntlets <laughs> down. No, I. You have to answer. I'm not prepared. I have, oh. So do you I, have a favorite dad joke? I have a paper joke. You do? Sorry, it's terrible. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's the little baby that's on there. <laughs> that's the <good. laughs> yeah. I have a favorite dad joke. Okay, go Let's ahead. Let's hear it. Um, how do you make a tissue dance? You put a little buggy in it. You put a little, yes. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Hannah? Any dad jokes? Oh, the one that comes to mind because my last name is fish. So we always got this one is what do you call a fish with no eye? I don't know. I haven't heard this one. Okay. <laughs> 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 on that note <laughs> you haven't given a dad joke all three of us just yeah i know i had i had my turn and now the dad has not put a dad my, joke I, down I, it was, uh, we're shame. all shame we're all parents shame where's shame. the, where's the Where bell that? shame game of thrones guys it was fun enjoyed getting thank to uh getting to spend a little time with you guys yes, thank and, you um, so much for joining us absolutely Thanks for having us. Look yeah, forward to you. seeing you guys do more and exciting mm-hmm. things. And um, look forward to for everybody again. Uh, if you didn't more hear show it me. before, uh, you got five episodes of Show Me you can see on the NCPA website. There's a lot of other resources on the NCPA there. NCPA website and on their YouTube channel. And their YouTube yeah. channel. Yeah, but go to the website because there's a lot of other resources mm-hmm. there. Absolutely. If you're not an NCPA member, you I should hope be. You, I hope you see fun <laughs> things going on and relationships being made and things happening between. And, you got to get out of. In. You got to get out of your own pharmacy and be part of something mm-hmm. bigger. Absolutely. So. Exactly. All right. Look well, forward to seeing you all again sometime. Thank you, Hannah. Thank Excellent. you, Tana. Thank you. All right. Thank Bye. you. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you for watching the Catalyst Pharmacy Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, please like, subscribe, and follow us wherever you get your podcast. Give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts to help us reach more pharmacy professionals like you.